Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about version control with Unity. So for that, you must install JTSM. Once you uh, search for JTSM, the first link you get would be the one that you should uh, go to. And uh, for uh, here, we'll be downloading the version that is suitable for us. So I am using a Windows system. So I will go on and uh, get this uh, Windows version. So again, I'm using 64 bit of uh, Windows OS. So I should download this. But the thing is, I already downloaded it and I have installed. Uh, so I won't be downloading it. But yeah, you, you guys can just uh, check it and download it from here. After this, uh, search for JIT. LFS. So LFS stands for uh, large file support. So uh, whenever we work on Unity, especially for making a game uh, or any interactive application, there will be some files that are way huge than uh, what is usually anticipated. So for that, JIT has something called a JIT LFS that supports uh, a heavier uh, file size. So we go here and uh, again uh, download the version that is uh, most suitable for us so uh, yeah uh, currently i have uh, downloaded it and installed it uh, so i won't be downloading but yeah this is the uh, place where you should download it for mac and windows it's available even for uh, linux it's available so download and install both so once we install both uh, there is something uh, called as a uh, what you can say application that helps you interact with the repos you have so uh, one thing that I'm using uh, to have my uh, uh, what you can say repo is uh, you can see here. So uh, Bitbucket is a standard uh, uh, one that a lot of people use, even corporations use this. So at a personal level, I'm also using this. So here we can have a set of repositories. Uh, set of repositories uh, that uh, we can work on. So for this video, I'm going to create a demo repo. So we can uh, create a new project. Project is demo project. And I'll create a repo with uh, like demo repo. So uh, there are a few options, just uh, keep it as it is and hit the create repo button. So there is a repo that is created for us. So uh, to get this repo uh, in our local system, we can use multiple uh, tools. Even the uh, JIT uh, that we have installed, uh, gives a JIT bash. So uh, here also you can type in and uh, do all the operations but uh, for me just you know to make it easier to work on i use fork there are a lot of tools actually even uh, 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 there's one from uh, uh, source tree as well uh, but uh, currently i'm using a uh, fork because i really like the way this interface is uh, laid out and all that uh, so i'm using it uh, okay uh, so here is our repo uh, we want to clone it so first thing that you should do is you have a empty folder. I will create an empty folder. In here. Demo. Okay. So uh, what we are going to do is we are going to clone this repo inside the folder. So I'm keeping it HTTPS. You can use SSH uh, where there is uh, no need for you to enter login credentials again and again. So, but uh, for now I installed uh, uh, JIT uh, for just HTTPS. So I'm using it and it kind of works fine with four. So uh, no issues, but if you want to use command uh, prompt for all your operations, uh, it's always better option to go for SSH. Here you will get the option for that. Here I will take the option to clone and I have selected this uh, folder where I uh, store all of my Unity projects. It's a, a NVMe2 uh, slot so it's kind of fast to load and unload so 
that's why I use this address and I will uh, clone the repo the folder should be empty so that's uh, a thing uh, what happened is I created a demo here but uh, as you can see I just created the unity project folder what it will do is it will create a project for me so I could have selected demo and this would have this folder would be created inside this demo but anyway here like this is what we get by default so this this uh, JIT ignore actually uh, is not uh, uh, what we are going to use so it it, it has some uh, what we can say a sample that uh, shows like what way it will, we can use this but uh, we will just uh, keep it aside for now and uh, I will uh, go to one of uh, the JIT ignore that I already have with me so I will just copy this and paste it here so this ignore file uh, holds all the things that we don't need to be pushed to, through the repository. So the repository that, that, that I just created is just to store all the uh, files that are related to the Unity project that I may you know, end up accessing in some other system as well. So these things are not needed. Okay, uh, so, so this is done. And there is another file called uh, attributes. So uh, what these uh, attributes do is uh, these kind of uh, say to uh, uh, JIT LSS that uh, there are few files that are large and you should handle them. So we need uh, JIT attributes and uh, JIT ignore. Both the files are needed. So yeah. So now we have cloned the repo, uh, but uh, we have not created a Unity project. So uh, there are multiple ways to do it but what i follow is like it's it's not the best way but it kind of gets the work done so uh, what i do is i create a project okay the, these names doesn't matter now so just what we are going to do is we are going to just create a project okay just a project nothing else create it wait for it it will take some time Okay, so the project is created, but we don't need this project. Okay, I will explain why. So what I will do is I will right click and show in Explorer. So this is our demo project. We will close the Unity here. And we will just check the fork once. So what it says is there are uh, two local changes. These are the two things that we had added. So it has, it, it's saying that these two are the changes that are there. So we'll just keep it as it is and we'll go back to the folder where we have this project. So what I do is I control it. I basically copy it. And paste it in the repo we just created. The repo folder that we just created. Paste it here and then just I will delete this demo project or put it in some weird position, weird location. So yeah, uh, okay, so now we are done. Now what I will do is, I will open the project and select the repo folder that we had created and updated just now. So now, just give it some time. okay so it will open we'll just check the fork so it, it it shows a lot of things are added now okay these are the uh, folders the unity a uh, project folder that i had added to this uh, uh, repo folder so what we will do is we'll just check the repo in here so there is nothing there's only just one uh, file that was created by default that is jtignore okay so what we will do is I uh, will just wait for uh, this project to load. Now it's uh, loaded. What we will do is in fork, we are going to stage all of this. Okay. So uh, I use uh, VS Code for programming 
but if you use uh, uh, visual studio you will be having some other set of uh, folder in here uh, so just check it out i am not sure about that so that the, all these folder uh, you know, some of them depend on the tools you are using with unity uh, so yeah once this is done we will commit it okay uh, this will be created the unity project and i will commit it and you will see uh, a number over here this uh, shows the number of commits that you have in your local system but are not in the repository okay so now here we know that these are things we created but as you can see here there are no files so what we will do is uh, in fork we will right click and push master to origin so basically what we are doing is we are uh, creating a copy of our folder in the uh, repo or the server that bitbucket owns so we will just push it and wait for it to complete the task so now you can see here there is no number because uh, there are no local commits that are not pushed everything is pushed so now we will go here and refresh the page once and you can see all the folders are here there are packages uh, there are settings that we have so there are a lot of things that are pushed so this is my project so i can go to any system and get this project and it will work for me okay so uh, one more thing why i use a fork and not use the git bash that they provide is it's kind of easy to set up an account so here if we go and go to accounts so here i already have mine okay if uh, because like when we push or pull there will be some issue like asking for the password and all like some people may encounter that so what you have to do is you have to come here just click on this add button and just log in uh, it will actually open a, a default browser page uh, for atlassian that is a uh, bitbucket so if i were to log in over there then everything in here will be set up you can easily push and pull the code without any issues so that's why i use a fork and not uh, uh, a git bash in case if you want to use commands you can just click here it will open the command prompt in the current folder in the current folder so as i was saying there will there are some issues i will just show you like what i am facing if i want to uh, uh, pull the code from the repo what will happen is it will throw a stupid error uh, so here like no matter what password i give it won't work because it's uh, let's ignite at bitbucket and not my regular email that i used to log in so this will never work for me uh, so uh, this is the reason uh, why i am not using uh, git bash instead i'm using a fork it will make your life a bit easier so yeah as far as the version control is concerned like this is all uh, we are going to do we are all this is all we are going to need and uh, uh, i have showed you like uh, how we uh, push the code so uh, if you want to uh, pull the uh, particular thing in another system what you have to do is you have to again like, of course uh, log in and you have to click on this button so what happens is whatever is there in this particular branch will be uh, updated in your local system the new system that you have just moved to so this will uh, help in making sure that uh, even if you are uh, traveling a lot you may have a system in your home and another system at your friend's home like even with that there won't be any issues you can work on all the systems and all the things will be updated in here so yeah uh, that's all for today guys uh, if there are anything that you think i have missed or if you think there is something that i should have covered please let me know i will make a video as soon as possible and uh, upload it uh, so uh, yeah again like uh, we are here to learn and make mistakes so let's uh, learn together and uh, if possible uh, whenever uh, you have time uh, please help others who are trying to learn new things so that's the best thing we can do uh, so yeah that's it for today guys thank you